Let's take a look when our consumer is borrow constrained or there's a borrowing or liquidity constraint held on this person. So we're going to look at our normal IBL, our intertemporal budget line model where we have C1 and C2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put a dashed line here. So this would be if everything was normal, what we've seen so far. So let's just say that would be the normal IBL, right? Our regular assumptions where uh, individuals can borrow from their future resources and interest rates are the same. Uh, let's just go ahead and say this point right here, we're just picking an arbitrary point, is the no lending, no borrowing point. Well, if the thing that we're going to say is that the economic agent uh, cannot borrow against future income, future income and future wealth, they cannot borrow against it. Well, what do we know? We know at the no lending, no borrowing point, this is Y1 plus W1, and this is Y2 plus W2. And remember that any point above this then, if I want to consume more, I have to save. Here, if I want to consume more than current resources, I would have to borrow. Well, what happens if they cannot borrow? Well, then this entire section right here, this entire section right here, is no longer able to be had. What that means is we have a straight line down and my budget constraint ends up being cut off at the no lending, no borrowing point. So all of these consumption bundles here, all of these possibilities of consumption bundles here, these are no longer attainable. So these are no longer attainable because this person is borrow constrained. Right? There's a liquidity constraint. They can't obtain this liquidity. But you know, people can still save. So we would just attach the regular IBL up here. And this is how we would get this liquidity constrained uh, IBL. And, and so if you're a saver, right, what do we remember from saving, right? We remember saving is up in this part here. This is where we have our saver versus, we'll put it in red down here. This is the section where we have a borrower. So in this type of model, only borrowers are the ones that would be hurt. Savers, nothing would change. Now let's go ahead though, and let's look at, um, a more realistic example, because usually people can borrow against future income, they just might have to pay a higher interest rate. So let's look at this exact same idea, but instead, what we're going to have is we're going to have an interest rate that you borrow at greater than the interest rate that you save at. So we have our model as well, right? Our two-period model, C1 and C2. Again, let's arbitrarily pick a no lending, no borrowing point. And this might be getting old, you know, like I draw this every single time, but it's very important to understand that this point is Y2 plus W2. This is Y1 plus W1. And so we have this no lending, no borrowing point. But we see that our borrowing rate is greater than my saving rate. So what that's going to mean is I'm going to have a flatter line for my savers and a steeper line for my borrowers. So my IBL is going to look like that. Notice that if this was, um, I'm gonna put, let's put a blue dotted line. Let's assume that the uh, we would have continued to extend this out, right? So like this would be the IBL if it was the same rate for both borrowers and savers. Notice what we're doing is we're seeing on the borrowing side a rotation in, but it's not rotating in all the way. So there still is, right, some borrowing that's allowed. So I'll put that in, in red here, right? There's still some borrowing that's allowed, but not complete borrowing. Well, what does this point end up being right here? Well, it's the same exact thing as we saw before. It's Y1 plus W1 plus Y2 plus W2 over 1 plus R. But remember this R here, right? This is going to be the R, the rate at which you borrow. And as that goes up, this is going to continue to rotate in. This is going to stay the same up here, right? This point up here, remember this is always Y1 plus W1 
times one plus r, but in this case, that's the savings rate. And then we also add my future resources, y2 plus w2. And we went ahead last week and we showed how all that stuff was calculated. So what we showed between these two, right? So this one is when the interest rates are, are different. And the previous one, if you remember, took this and it cut it completely off, right? And it got rid of all of this part. And that was when they had a complete liquidity constraint. They weren't allowed to borrow at all.